Hi, my name is Dr. Taylor Van Weinboom. I'm here to talk to you about um, peripheral neuropathy and trying to address that using both functional neurology and functional medicine, two of the main things that we use here at our practice. Um, so what we'll start off with is what is peripheral neuropathy? Um, what causes it and what can be done to restore your peripheral nerves to health? Um, peripheral neuropathy is very common. Um, it's a chronic disease that affects 20 million Americans. Um, it's an electrical wiring breakdown basically in the body. So, you know, think my, my arm is a wire and there's basically something that's been taken out right here. There's no connection. You know, basically we're talking about your feet and hands can't communicate with your brain and your brain can't communicate with your feet and hands. So what does peripheral neuropathy actually mean? Well, peripheral means further out from the center of the body, uh, so distant from the brain and the spinal cord. And the neuro means nerve, and pathy means abnormal. So basically, abnormal nerve function far away from the brain. And that's why you know most people get their symptoms in, in their feet, in their hands, this peripheral area of the body. Um, so 10 signs of peripheral neuropathy. You can have numbness, burning of the feet, cramping, um, pain when walking, sharp electrical pain. Um, a lot of people talk about maybe even, you know, kind of like a knife in the back of their calf kind of thing when they're walking. Uh, difficulty sleeping, you know, typically from even the covers on their feet cause pain. Uh, loss of balance and falling, weakness and swelling. Um, so the symptoms really depend on which type of nerve is affected. And there's three main types of nerves. So you have your, your sensory nerves, which are all your sensations. So you know, when somebody feels, touches you, you know, on your arm or your feet, the, sens the sensory information. The motor, which is when you're doing things, you know, walking, um, motor actions, and then of course the autonomic system, uh, which carries information to blood vessels. So those are more of the things that you don't control consciously. So. Sensation changes can really happen um, because, you know, all the nerves can be affected, but usually the fibers change in sensation from burning sensation to nerve pain to tingling or numbness or an ability, inability to determine joint position, which causes the balance problems. Now, the problem with balance problems is, is very evident when you look at uh, the literature is the fall is the leading cause of injury, leading cause of death in the elderly. Um, a lot of people having peripheral neuropathy or let's say cerebellar, which is the back part of the brain issues, is going to give you a lot of weeble and wobble, a lot of balance issues. Uh, so for many neuropathies, sensation changes often begin in the feet and they progress towards the center of the body with involvement of other areas as the condition worsens. So usually you'll get it at the bottom of the feet or maybe the hands where your, your symptoms tend to be and then it'll progress up the legs so say it starts in the foot say my hands your foot and then it starts to progress up the calf to the knee and then further and further up um, and that's why a lot of the peripheral neuropathy um, people can end up in wheelchairs because they can't feel where their limbs are at all when they're walking so it's very dangerous for them um, and that's why they have, like I said, the movement difficulties, which is usually damage to the motor fibers, which interferes with muscle control and can cause weakness, loss of muscle bulk, loss of dexterity, and sometimes cramps are a sign of motor nerve involvement. Um, so all chronic health conditions have some common threads. And this is what we're going to try to hit on is we're not going to just look at the nerves or just the blood vessels or, or just the myelin sheath part of the nerve. Uh, we want to take everything into, con you know, into consideration so we know exactly for you what we need to do to get you feeling better. So uh, you know, we have the conditions here on the left and kind of some of the imbalanced things on the right. So we're talking about peripheral neuropathy, thyroid conditions, insulin resistance, fibromyalgia, uh, chronic neck and back pain. And two of the big things that need to be addressed are both metabolic and neurologic imbalances. So, you know, anemia, chronic inflammation, inflammation is really, really bad. Um, I mean, it's finding out more and more inflammation is the, kind of the starting pro process of most diseases that occur. Um, so, you know, we're talking about hidden infections that we can address metabolically. Then, of course, or neurologic imbalances, which decrease the frequency of firing to the brain and the nervous system, which can give you overall fatigue. A lot of peripheral neuropathy people will have lethargy, just tired, fatigued all the time. And the reason for that is this, this pain signal from your feet is going up constantly, constantly, and it's just fatiguing your brain. It makes you have a little bit of the brain fog, just, just hard to even just do anything. So if we can address those things as well, I mean, your quality of life is going to be able to increase hugely. Um, so all chronic illnesses are a combination of both neurologic 
and metabolic problems, which require proper neurologic treatment and metabolic treatment. I think that makes sense. Um, so metabolism, it's the things you put into your body which create energy, create basically the building blocks for, for your body to work. So here's a question. 30% of your energy goes to what system? Uh, your endocrine, your digestive, nervous, immune, or cardiovascular? And the answer should be pretty obvious from what we've already touched on is it's the nervous system. So your brain, spinal cord, you know, all your peripheral nerves, they need proper metabolism or energy for a well-functioning brain and nerves. So metabolic problems can lead to peripheral neuropathy and that's why. Um, so leaving causes of peripheral neuropathy, um, statin drugs, uh, which are just your cholesterol lowering drugs, are huge and we'll touch on that uh, in a second here. Also damaged back from years or decades ago, um, built up a scar tissue. Now obviously, you know, with these things, being a chiropractor, we can obviously address those fairly easily. Um, and then obviously diabetes type or insulin resistance, chronic inflammation like we already talked about, which can involve food sensitivities, inflammatory foods, um, hidden infections, high insulin, uh, hormone balances, and of course chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy. So satin drugs. So statins inhibit the formation of cholesterol. Cholesterol makes up the sheath of the nerve. So my arm again, imagine that's a nerve and it has bubble wrap all the way around it. Well, that'd be the myelin sheath. That's what we're talking about right here. So that's made up of cholesterol, a lot of it. So if we're decreasing the cholesterol in the nerve, in the, in the body, uh, we're decreasing the main focus of that myelin sheath and it starts to die off. I mean, that's why we need to look at these things. Now, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna tell you to get off your statin drugs. Uh, it's not within my scope. But if you can be informed about these things, you can make a proper decision and hopefully talk to your medical provider about these things and um, maybe look at them more in depth that way. So statin drugs also inhibit the formation of coenzyme CoQ10. Uh, CoQ10 is necessary for nerves to function. Uh, so just another reason why statins really increase your chance of peripheral neuropathy a ton. Uh, so they're the leading cause of peripheral neuropathy right now in America. So statin drugs increase the risk. So, you know, Neurology Journal in May 2002, uh, basically what they had were statins or cholesterol lowering drugs increase your risk of peripheral neuropathy by 16 times, which is 1600%. That's huge. Um, that's just, that's a really, really big number. And you should really consider that when you're looking at that. Obviously some people should probably be on these meds, but, um, but probably most could do without make that decision you know, for yourself. So is cholesterol really the enemy? Um, why has heart disease gone up dramatically since statins came on the market? Why do countries with chronically high cholesterol have lower heart disease? And why do just as many people with cholesterol, or low cholesterol die from heart attacks as people with high cholesterol? What we're finding now is cholesterol is really not that bad. It's actually a good thing to an extent. You know, you can get to a point where it's really, really increased and yeah, we need to maybe knock that down a little bit. Um, but cholesterol is good for you. Cholesterol does a lot of things in the body. It's peripheral neuropathy, uh, your myelin sheath, we need it. Yeah, those kind of things. But the reason the cholesterol will stick to the blood vessel is inflammation. Inflammation makes the blood vessel rugged and that's why the cholesterol sticks to it. So if we can address the inflammation, you know, a lot of these cholesterol things won't matter. Um, and that information has been out there for years. I mean, lots of years. And it's just becoming more maybe accepted or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but that, that research has been out there for a long time. But they, they continue to just push these statins on, on most people that come into the me regular medical doctor's office. Um, so basically, the take home message from what we're talking about is cholesterol won't clog your arteries unless you're inflamed. So you need cholesterol for proper nerve and brain function. So, okay, we'll move on to the lower back, how it can contribute to peripheral neuropathy. So stenosis, degenerative disc, bulging disc, arthritis, you know, those kind of things. And obviously, like I say, being a chiropractor, we can address those things uh, very specifically. So a common trait of a damaged low back is your lower spine is compressed, placing pressure on the nerves that go to your feet. So we'll just say, you know, for instance, the sciatic nerve down here in red, you know, say there's some compression up through in the lower back that can cause, you know, decreased blood flow, decreased nerve signal to the, to the feet, which can obviously be a factor in peripheral neuropathy. So diabetes and insulin resistance. So nerves need a lot of energy to survive. Uh, glucose is the nerves source of energy. So 
Insulin is a hormone that puts glucose into the nerve. Now, when you are diabetic or insulin resistant, glucose can't adequately get into the nerve and the nerves get fatigued. The numbness, the burning, the pain, the weakness, uh, the tingling. So, I mean, if you're diabetic, obviously your chances of having peripheral neuropathy go up quite a bit as well. So, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the inflammation. So this is just a, a good quote is, you cannot build a house if it's on fire. So we won't be able to properly help you and address your peripheral neuropathy if you're chronically inflamed. It, we just can't heal very well when we're inflamed, not at all. So common causes of inflammation that contribute to peripheral neuropathy, um, food sensitivities and inflammation, inflammatory foods. So that's why we, we we really try to steer people towards um, a paleo type diet, which is um, falls under the category of like an autoimmune diet or anti-inflammatory diet. Um, and the reason for that is just so we have the proper building blocks and we can get rid of all that inflammation so you can actually heal. So we talk about also hidden gut infections, omega-3 to omega-6 ratios, obviously high insulin plays into that and hormone imbalances. So metabolic causes need to be addressed if you're to win the battle against peripheral neuropathy. So we talk about you know, bringing in your labs so we can look at them or maybe having some labs run and we, uh, we partner with certain labs to get those things accomplished. And what we would do with those is we look at them functionally. So have you ever been told that your tests are normal? Typically, probably the biggest offender is thyroid patients. Um, they'll come back, their labs would be, you know, they'll go say, hey, your lab values are, are really good. You must be doing really well. And they'll be like, well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm having a lot of issues, a lot of symptoms of my, my thyroid condition still. And they're like, well, the numbers say, and this is really why that, that can happen. So lab ranges are inaccurate. Uh, they're, they're based on a bell curve. So just a big, big old bell curve through here. So functional lab ranges are more sensitive to reveal problems. And that's what we used to look at your blood values. So. So basically we look at this here, um, here's your abnormal in red here, abnormal here, and this blue right here is your functional range. And then here in your yellow is basically your pre-disease or for you, it could be a disease state. So if we can kind of nip it in the butt before it becomes abnormal, I'll tell you something that doesn't make sense. You have a value right in here, close to abnormal, but they say, you know what, we're still within normal ranges, so we're not gonna address it, we're not gonna do anything at this point. Why wait until you're in disease to start trying to fix something. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Why wait until you have an issue? Why don't we get it before it becomes an issue? So here's just some examples of functional ranges and traditional lab ranges. So we talk about glucose, you know, diabetics, stuff like that. Functional ranges between 85 and 100. Um, the traditional lab ranges is 65 to 110. So if you came in, let's say at a 73, we say, okay, you're pretty close to hypoglycemia. We need to start addressing that now, not until, not wait till it gets to 65 and guess what? You're in disease. And if, you know, just some other examples as far as triglycerides and TSH would be like thyroid people and stuff like that and how that all correlates. So when you can't feel your feet, certain things happen to the brain. So if you cut the nerve, you change the brain. So what this study found was Specifically with peripheral neuropathy, you have what's on your brain called a somatotopic map. And we'll have a quick example of that here. Um, basically, your, your appendages, different parts of your body are represented on different parts of your brain. So when you stop getting those signals from that part of your body to your brain, it starts to die off. Uh, and what that correlated with, specifically with peripheral neuropathy, is loss of balance, hello, obviously, memory loss, depression, anxiety, Alzheimer's, dementia, insomnia. A lot of people with peripheral neuropathy have insomnia. Um, that's something that we can address for sure. So here's just a, an example of the somatotopic map. So here's the, uh, the foot right in through here uh, and just some other things that are kind of um, represented through there, but that's what we're talking about when we say somatotopic map. Um, so what does a neuron nerve need to revive and repair? Fuel, it needs energy, it needs, it needs good glucose, it needs to be able to actually absorb the glucose to heal. Uh, proper oxygen, we'll, we'll talk about that more. Um, you become a patient. Um, get rid of the inflammation and then good neurotransmitters and activation and lots of it. So here's our activation. This is uh, the HACOMED, kind of our secret weapon here. So at our office, we're the only clinic in Iowa to utilize the HACOMED horizontal microcurrent therapy. So the HACOMED horizontal microcurrent therapy stimulates the nerves electrically, 
which will help it block some of the pain. It improves blood flow, which is a big issue. Uh, and it stimulates the nerves biochemically, so it allows for greater metabolism and healing. And it reduces inflammation locally. So it does a lot of really great things for peripheral neuropathy people. And then this is just what talks about the alternating current and things like that. It's a very, very intricate machine. We have a lot more information we'll give you if you come into the office about it and, and kind of why it works. So the difference, so there's, yeah, there's, there's hundreds of different forms of electrical currents, you know, your TENS, your, your electrical stimulators, you know, all these different things. So when you have bioelectrical and biochemical effects on the body, horizontal microcurrent electrical current is the best and most state of the art. So when peripheral nerves start to die, they need to be stimulated. And the Hakamed is the best at doing that. Um, and that's why we use it. Um, and right now our clinic is the only clinic in the state that has it. We're the only ones using it right now. Um, a lot of people ask me is, you know, why, why don't other people know about this? Or why doesn't my medical doctor know about this? I don't know. I ask them. Um, that's a good question. I'm part of a group called the Super Metabolic Group that um, we talk about just how to get patients better and different kind of things that we found that get astronomical results. And this is one of them. This is how I found out about it. I found out about um, Dr. Ed Byer in uh, Chicago and Mike Johnson in Wisconsin. Um, that's how I found out about it. And it gets phenomenal results. And that's why we got it because we want to help people a lot. So. You know, we use other things too. So one of the things we use as well is um, cold laser. So what we do is the cold laser repairs peripheral neuropathy and the way it does it is through specific wavelengths of light. So it's been proven to go into the nerve cells and stimulate energy production inside the neuron, allowing it to heal. This light also stimulates microcirculation and lymphatic drainage. Um, the light has to be coherent, meaning that it doesn't scatter when it hits the tissue. So a lot of peripheral neuropathy people might have had um, anode therapy. This is an anode therapy. This is a different. Um, anode therapy is not coherent, and it's not nearly as effective as cold laser. So that's why we use the cold laser, not anode therapy, if you maybe had that in the past. So what else is done to nerve activation and repair? So obviously we talked about the Hakamed, which is great. It's a fantastic tool. Um, low level laser therapy. We use PNRT, which is just peripheral neuropathy rehab therapy, a machine called the Rebuilder. Um, we use that here in the office as well. We also use far infrared heat to stimulate um, blood flow and healing. And then we actually give you an at home rebuild, um, Rebuilder unit for maintenance and nerve activation um, once you leave the office. And then we'll, depending on the case, we'll use vibration um, to stimulate the sensory nerves in the feet. So the rebuilder therapy is done daily at home that helps to reestablish the connections between the peripheral nerves. Um, it's yours to keep, and we use after the conclusion of our treatment program in the clinic. So what we wanna do, what we really wanna focus in on is, is getting you well here, obviously, but not just you know, come in for treatment, and guess what? In three months, you're gonna be right back where you were. That doesn't make any sense. We wanna give you steps. We wanna give you enough information that you can maintain the, the, the increases, the, all the results that you get here. The Rebuilder is one of those things, that, and that's why we give it to you for use at home once you leave, to continue to stimulate those nerves when you're at home, when you're not here in the office. We're gonna get you there, but we wanna make sure you stay there. It's not about a, a fix and then you're back to where you were. It's about a fix and maintaining it. And that's where the diet comes in too, the proper building blocks, all those things. It's about getting you well and staying well. Um, so we also use something called E-Fat Cream, which is a sterified fatty acid complex. Um, it's used at home and in the office. What it is is that it's just an anti-inflammatory cream uh, to reduce local inflammation. It's all natural, so it's not like, you know, kind of meds or over-the-counter stuff. Um, and we use other supplements based on your, your blood results, what's really gonna be best for you. This isn't a cookie cutter approach. It's not, okay, put somebody here, put somebody there, get them out of the office, adjust them there, adjust them there, get them out of the office. It's what does Joe need today? What does Joe need to get better? That's what we're gonna do. Does he need some certain supplements because he has an issue? Does he need you know more time on the Rebuilder or more time on the Hakamed? That's what we got to find out, and that's what we do. We curtail it for everybody specifically because nobody's different. Or, excuse me, everybody's different. Nobody's the same. Um, so, some key points um, it takes many different things to correct peripheral neuropathy. You know, not just one thing will do it. Um, there's guys that just use the Hakamed, there's guys that just use the Rebuilder Therapy, there's guys that just use laser, there are guys that just 
you know, just do this, just do that. We use it all because we don't want good results. We want excellent results and we want it to be maintainable. We want it to be um, something that can happen and you stay that way. So uh, you must address both the underlying metabolic and neurological problems to have success. And that's what we're gonna do. So the thing about peripheral neuropathy is it's progressive. It starts in the feet, but it works its way up. It doesn't stop. You know, some are faster moving than others, but uh, it will progress over time. And that's the unfortunate thing. So if we can get it and get it good and get you to a point that you know how, you have the knowledge to maintain it yourself too, when you're out of here, it won't come back. So our peripheral neuropathy program is the most comprehensive and state of the art that exists in Iowa. And I will stand behind that because it absolutely is. Um, so comprehensive blood work, looking at the functional ranges to identify underlying metabolic conditions that cause peripheral neuropathy. We want to see all those kind of things. And then also place on an anti-inflammatory diet for allow for healing and the proper building blocks. And then peripheralopathy healing and nerve activation via our other therapies and uh, whatever you might see to go on through here. Something I don't have in the PowerPoint that um, we do with everybody is, uh, I call it detox, there's not really a better name for it, but we want to use a specific method to see what needs to be taken out of the body. Um, some people are high in heavy metals, high in uh, maybe antibiotic residue or whatever it is. We have a specific algorithm uh, for, I call it, like I say, I call it detoxification to get those things out of the body. Because a lot of those issues can cause inflammation, can cause um, peripheral neuropathy. So I say, I don't have it in here, but that is something that we also put into the program, just so you know. Um, so the real question is, how bad are you? So our, our initial exam includes a complete neurological exam, um, including the peripheral neuropathy Toronto scoring test. So normal 74. So I always ask people, you know, what are you? Let's see where you're at. And this will give us our, our percentage of nerve function decrease. So, you know, like say that 85% it's really hard to get results after that. So we wanna see where we're at at the starting point and then we can continue to do the Toronto exam through the program to see our, our results, to, to track it. It's kind of a, a, a milestone thing for us. Um, so what's next? Make an appointment, you know, come in, get checked out. We'll see what we're working with. We'll let you know if we can help you or not. Um, if we can't, we're not gonna try to have you come to the office, that wouldn't make any sense. Um, so visit one, we'll do the Toronto exam We'll view any existing labs, so bring them in if you have them. Uh, we'll have you fill out the metabolic assessment forms, and then well, we say we mu you must, but I really highly recommend that you bring your spouse or significant other, um, just so they know what's going on too. Uh, we want it to be a, a group thing. We want them to know what's going on. We don't want it to be, you know, oh, I gotta come home and change all this stuff. We want them to be on board, because they really need to be on board too. Uh, so visit number two. Uh, is a case review to see whether we accept your case or not, you know, whether we can help you or not. Uh, overview of further testing that needs to be done. Uh, review of the neurological findings from visit one. An overview of the treatment plans. An overview of financial obligation. And uh, like I say, we really highly recommend that you have your spouse or another other with you just so um, they know what's going on as well. And you don't make any decisions that you know might get uh, button some heads at home, that kind of thing. So commitment slash assurance, you know, everybody asks about this and, and they should. Um, so three rules for acceptance of the case. You must be willing to make serious life changes. Um, you, you know, you've done things to get here. These things don't happen overnight. It's a progressive disease. Um, so it's not gonna get better in a few visits. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get better, but we need you to make some actual changes for yourself too, for your health. If not for you, then for your spouse. If not for you, then for your kids or whoever it is, but you need to make serious life changes to get yourself turned back around. And we'll give you all the steps to do that. Um, you also have to take accountability of your health. Like I say, if you're diabetic and you're eating donuts every day, come on, really, come on. You know, you have to take accountability. That's gonna affect you. That's not a thing you can do. You know, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have diabetes and I don't eat donuts. You don't need them. Your body doesn't crave, well, you might crave donuts, but, um, you have to take accountability for it, you know? You can't just all of a sudden wake up one day and have no feeling in your hands and, and feet and you know multiple heart attacks and strokes from your diabetes. Um, say, wow, there's nothing I could have done about it. There absolutely is things you can do and, and we're gonna help you take those steps. And we want you to know that we have to work together. It's not, we can't do everything here. It has to be um, a group, it has to be cohesive between us. Um, and then obviously insurance slash Medicare only pays for a small portion of this care, you know, if any. So 
We've made our care plans affordable so that 96% of people that come into our office can afford it. Um, because we want people to come in, we want people to get better, and we wanna do everything we can to make the finances work. Insurance won't pay for a lot of this stuff. Why? I don't know. Talk to your insurance company. They, I, why wouldn't they want you to get better? It's gonna save them money overall, isn't it? I don't know. So, so we'll talk about that stuff when you come in the office too, to get everything kind of nailed down that way. So things to think about, you know, on a scale from one to 10, how serious is your illness? Um, where do you see yourself in three years if it continues to progress? You know, are you walking with a walker? Okay, three years maybe in a wheelchair. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen to your relationships? How's it affected your relationships, your work, your ability to enjoy life? For a lot of you, this is supposed to be a golden years of your life. How golden is it if you're in a wheelchair and you can't do anything you actually wanna do? You work your whole life to be able to do nothing. That's, that's not great. So let's, let's fix that. Um, and then think of three things that you could do if you didn't have peripheral neuropathy, you know, maybe go on a walk with grandkids or, you know, whatever you enjoy, go for a bike ride, enjoy life a little more. And then on a scale from one to 10, how serious are you about eliminating your illness? Um, if you're a one, it's probably not going to work for you. Well, you'll get better. We'll get you better, but it will come back if you're not serious about getting well and staying well. So just in closing, my name is Dr. Taylor Van Weinboom, Ames, Iowa. Um, here's my email and my phone number. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you can obviously contact me. My email is right there, Dr. Taylor at drtaylorchiropractic.com. You can send me a message. I, I'll find it. I will email you back you know, as soon as possible. And really what we're about is just getting people better, getting people well, giving them information to make right decisions for themselves. And like I say, it is a two-way street. We'll do everything we can for you. And uh, you got to be willing to do everything you can for yourself as well. And then if we do that, we're going to be pretty good.